Recording started. Welcome to this session on properties of real numbers. What we're going to talk about today, we're going to be identifying properties of real numbers and we're going to use them to simplify numeric and algebraic expressions. We're going to simplify expressions involving exponents and we're going to determine whether sets are closed under operations. So properties that we're going to be working with are the commutative property of addition, the commutative property of multiplication, the associative property of addition, the associative property of multiplication, and the distributive property. So examples of these, for the commutative property of addition, a plus b is equal to b plus a. That's the property. An example would be adding 2 plus 3 is the same as adding 3 plus 2 or 100 plus 1 is the same as adding 1 plus 100. And then the commutative property of multiplication, a times b is the same as b times a. So for example, 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. You get 6 either way. Then for the associative property of addition, um, taking three numbers and adding them together, you can group them whichever way you want and you still get the same answer. So for example, 2 plus 3 plus 4, if we add the 3 plus 4 first, we get 7, add the 2 and you get 9. We could group the 2 and the 3 together and we still get the same answer. 2 plus 3 gives us 5, plus 4 gives you 9. The associative property of multiplication basically is the same idea. We're multiplying three numbers and we're grouping them in two different ways. So 2 times 3 times 4, if I do the 3 times 4 first, that gives me 12, times 2 gives me 24. And then if I group the 2 and the 3 together first, that gives me 6, times 4 gives me 24 as well. The distributive property says that if I multiply a number outside of a sum, that's the same as taking that number and multiplying each part of the sum and adding it together. So distribute because what we're actually doing is taking this A and distributing it through the parentheses. So example, 2 times the quantity 3 plus 4 is the same as 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. And let's just check that to make sure that that's the case. So if I do 3 plus 4 here, I get 7. Times 2 gives me 14. If I do it with the distributive property, 2 times 3 gives me 6, 4 times 2 gives me 8, I add them together and I get 14. So you may be wondering, well, why would I want to do this on the right side when I can do, do it this way on the left? Um, but we're going to be working with some problems where you have variables and the distributive property will definitely come in handy if you have not used it in the past. Some more properties. Identity property of addition says that if I add anything to zero, I'll get what I started with. So 3 plus 0 gives me 3. The identity property of multiplication says if I multiply anything by 1, I get what I started with. So 3 times 1 gives me 3. And then the inverse property of addition. If I add a number in its opposite, I'm always going to get 0. So for example, 3 plus negative 3 will give me 0. Then the inverse property of multiplication, um, a times 1 over a is equal to 1. So if I multiply a number and its reciprocal, I get 1. So 4 and 1 fourth are reciprocals of each other. And you'll notice here this a doesn't equal 0. So think about why a can't be 0. This is something you probably learned quite a long time ago. You could even try it on your calculator, taking a number and dividing by zero and see what happens. Identify the property. So here you might want to pause um, for these next several slides and take a second to see if you can identify the property for x plus 9 equal to 9 plus x. And then you can um, cl click play again to find out the answer. This is an example of the commutative property for addition. Commutative property of addition. All we're doing is we're taking two numbers, adding them together two different ways. 
Next, we're going to look at this property. 2 times the quantity x plus 3 is the same as 2 times x plus 6. So what property is this? What did we do here? We actually distributed the 2 through the parentheses. 2 times x and 2 times 3 is 6. So we, so this property is the distributive property. Next, this one, x plus the quantity y plus 3 equal to x plus the quantity 3 plus y. Be careful on this one. You don't want to be tricked by the fact that we have three numbers. If you notice, all, we, all that we did was we switched around the y plus 3 and made it 3 plus y. We didn't actually group a different set of numbers in this part or on the right side. So this actually is the commutative property of addition. Next we have 5y times 1 is equal to 5y. So this property, and remember you can pause and try these on your own and then click play again to find out the answer. This is the identity property of multiplication. Identity property of multiplication. Because you're multiplying something times 1 and your result is what you started with. Next, we have xy quantity xy times z is equal to quantity x or x times quantity yz. So we did shift parentheses to regroup here. So this is the associative property of multiplication. And next, we have simplifying like terms. So in Algebra 1, you hopefully remember like terms. And here you can see some examples of like terms and some examples of terms that are not like terms. So if we look, why are these considered like terms? Well, they each have xy in their terms. So we have 2xy, 4xy, and negative 3xy. In order for you to have like terms, you have to have the same variables with the same exponents. So these are considered like terms, these three. And this is three terms here. 2xy is one term, 4xy is another, and negative 3xy is another. In this one, we only have two terms. 4a squared b cubed is a term, and 9a squared b cubed is a term. So they have matching variables and exponents. a squared, a squared, b cubed, b cubed. So that makes these like terms as well. If we look at these, the first three have an x, but the exponents are not matching. This has a squared, this has a 1, and this has a 3. This one doesn't even have a variable. So this group of terms are not like terms. So what we, the reason why we look at like terms is to help us when we're simplifying a problem that has multiple variables. So if we look at two, simplifying 2x minus 4y plus 6x minus 3y, what we're going to do is group together the like terms. I'm going to group together 2x and 6x. Now here's the important part about this. If you are going to rewrite it, grouping them together, you want to make sure that you keep the sign that's in front of the number or the term with that number. So this is a positive 6x, so I want to make sure I write it as plus 6x. Then I'm also going to group the negative 4y with the minus 3y, or negative 3y. And notice I said negative, minus, they are interchangeable. But make sure that you take that sign when you rewrite it. The 4y is a minus 4y. The 3y is a minus 3y. So very important. And then we combine them. 2x plus 6x will give me an 8x. And minus 4y and minus 3y is a minus 7y. 
Now I cannot simplify any further because these 8x and 7y are not like terms. So I use my rules for adding and subtracting integers to combine the like terms and this is our final answer. Now a little bit of, a couple problems that cause a lot of heartache for students, <laughs> especially when they put them into a calculator too if they're not put in correctly. Um, negative 3 to the 4th and quantity negative 3 to the 4th. Two different problems. You do not get the same results and you need to be very careful with these types of problems. Negative 3 to the 4th is actually the base of this is the 3. The exponent is the 4. Okay, so if you remember in working with exponents, let's put a problem over here to the side. The 2 is considered the base and the 4 is considered the exponent. So for this problem, the 3 is the base. The negative sign is not part of the base. So when I actually do this problem, I'm going to have the negative sign and 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So I'm actually multiplying 3 by itself 4 times. So that gives me, when I calculate that, recording started. So 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 gives us 81. And with that negative sign, our answer will be negative 81. Then for negative 3 to the fourth power, those parentheses mean that negative 3 is actually our base. So it means negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. And we get a positive 81. So very important that you realize the difference between these two problems. Um, what the parentheses mean um, when you have parentheses around the negative that means or around the number that means that the negative is part of the base so it's negative three times itself four times but when there's no parentheses then just the number three is your base and you're taking three times itself four times. And last but not least, we're going to simplify this problem. 6x plus 2y plus 9 plus negative 3x minus 5y minus 8. Order of operations tells us to always look at what's inside the parentheses. Well, when we look inside both of these parentheses, we have nothing that we can combine because we don't have any like terms. So we're going to drop the parentheses. And we are going to combine like terms. So I can bring the 6x and the minus 3x together. Remember it's a minus 3x. I'm going to bring the 2y and the minus 5y together. It's a plus 2y and a minus 5y. And I'm going to bring the plus 9 and the minus 8. So it's plus 9 minus 8. Now when I put these together, 6x minus 3x, will give me a 3x. 2y minus 5y will give me a minus 3y. And 9 minus 8 will give me a positive 1. So we get 3x minus 3y plus 1 as our final answer. And that ends the recording on properties of numbers.